So there are three types of space-time intervals, time-like, light-like, and space-like. In this video, we'll look at time-like intervals and see why this corresponds to something being time-like. Okay, so time-like intervals are ones where delta S squared is greater than zero. So delta S squared is greater than zero. And a reminder, the metric equation, delta S squared is delta T squared minus delta X squared. So let's think, um, if this is going to be positive, that means that this has to be larger than that. So let's try to picture that and think about what that might look like. So one way um, that this could be true, that we could get a positive number, would be if delta x is zero. So like if that's zero, then this squared is certainly positive. So let's consider that case first. And I'll draw... Um, a little space-time diagram, x and t. And a reminder that this interval, it's an interval between two events. And I'll put, I don't know, let's call it event A and B. So this is the case where um, delta x So suppose delta x happens to be zero. Then the interval between a and b definitely looks like it's time-like, right? I mean, there's no delta x. The only thing that's changed from a to b is that they're at different times. Um, so this is sort of a sim the simplest case. But what if delta x is not zero? Like maybe delta x is one and delta t is two or something like that, roughly. Um, then this is larger than that. And so we'll still have something positive here. So let me draw what that might look like. All right, so here's an x. And there's a time. And this will be a again. And maybe b is somewhere over here. So there's delta x. There's delta x between my fingers. There's delta t between my fingers. Delta t definitely bigger than delta x. So this is bigger than that. So we're going to get a positive number. But in this case, the um, it's not like a purely time type of deal, right? Because there is a delta x. Delta x is not zero. Aha. But someone else may have a different point of view. There could be a reference frame moving with respect to this one, such that the t prime axis happens to go right through b. I mean, that's certainly possible, right? So there's some reference frame that would look like this. And in this reference frame, a and b are purely time separated. In the primed reference frame, in the blue reference frame, um, delta x prime is zero, and delta t prime is whatever it is. So if, um, uh, let's see. So what I'm trying to get at is that if this condition is met, then I know, um, let's see. That's supposed to be right in between the two blue lines. Pretend it is. Okay, so if this condition is met, time is the time interval is greater than the um, space interval, that means this point B can be anywhere up in this upper triangle. This upper triangle are the points where T is larger than X. And if that's the case, I can always find some other reference frame. There's always some reference frame where A and B occur at the same place, and hence their separation is only time-like. And by the way, this might sound familiar, because what I've just described is um, how I defined the space-time interval in the first place. The space-time interval is the time 
read by a single clock, single inertial clock, that's present at both events A and B. And that, in this case, this would be exactly the clock who, um, at the origin of this moving frame. This would be a single clock that would measure the event at point A and the event at point B. And we've seen that the space-time interval is reference frame independent. Um, so the blue observer may say, all right, delta x is zero, delta x prime is zero, delta t prime is this. Um, so the space-time interval is this. Well, over here in the unprimed frame, we'll have a delta x and a delta t that are going to be different than the blue ones. But everybody is going to agree on what the um, space-time interval is. And I guess the way we argued that is that the definition of the space-time interval, the time measured by a single clock, single inertial clock present at both events, doesn't make reference to any um, um, reference frame. It's, it's unambiguous in how it's um, how it's defined. So, um, so these are time-like intervals. So let me summarize um, three features of time-like intervals. And so let me write these down and then we'll talk about them. Okay, so to summarize, these are the three key features um, to think about in for time-like intervals. So um, one, there's an inertial frame in which events occur at the same place. That's what's illustrated here. So in this frame, events A and B occur both at x prime equals zero. So their separation is purely time-like. The only thing that changes, according to the blue observers, is that these events are at different points in time, but not in space. So then the time between these two events, that would be the space-time interval, because in the blue frame, delta x is zero, and this, because it's time-like, is something we would measure with a clock. It would be a single clock present at both events. So it's time, right? So that's why it's time-like. Time-like are things we can measure with a clock. Just a clock. So all we need is a clock. And then a reminder that delta s is frame independent. In another frame, like the unprimed frame here, um, delta x is not necessarily zero. Um, but nevertheless, if you calculate delta s squared using the delta x and delta t using the metric equation, you'll get the same result in any reference frame. So this um, is a quick summary of time-like intervals. And again, this, I hope this is familiar because we've talked about a lot of this before. Um, in the next video, uh, we'll talk about space-like intervals, and that'll be new material because we haven't really encountered um, space-like intervals and used the metric equation on space-like intervals before.